Hey guys, what's up? Zijin Cheng here, and welcome to the review of the Yulephone B Pro. I was very excited about the new wave of MTK6732 phones being released after hearing that these processors use 30% less battery than the MTK6592 while being faster. While I have high hopes for battery life of MTK6732 phones in general, the small battery size of this specific phone combined with a large screen makes me apprehensive regarding battery life. I sincerely hope the LTE and 4G enabled Ulephone B Pro will live up to my lofty battery expectations. Regarding the design of the Ulephone, it has clearly lifted its design straight from OnePlus One's playbook, and hopefully they have copied the OnePlus One's quality as well. It has great specifications and retails for $170 at GearBest, but with a coupon code, you can bring that price down. Check out the link down below in the description. The Ulephone B Pro is almost the exact same size as the OnePlus One and it's just as light as the OnePlus One as well. In hand, it definitely does feel like a OnePlus One. The silver bezel around the entire phone looks quite nice. It gives the device a more premium feel by adding metal to the body of the phone. The front of the phone holds the front-facing camera as well as three capacitive buttons that do not light up. It has respectively sized bezels around the screen. The volume buttons are located on the left side of the phone while the power button is located on, on the other side of the phone. Both the volume and power buttons are of lower quality than I'm used to, and they feel less firm when pressed. The back of the phone is removable, but requires fingernails, patience, and bravery, as it feels like you're breaking the cover when you attempt opening it. It reveals a removable 2600mAh battery, a regular sized SIM card slot, a micro SIM card slot, as well as a micro SD card slot. The removable back is also interchangeable, available in black, white, and sandstone colors. It is textured rubbery plastic, providing a good grip while feeling good in hand. However, it does attract and show fingerprints quite easily. While the rubbery back feels good in hand, it does not feel as premium as phones constructed out of aluminum or glass. The camera and LED flash are located in the middle of the phone. However, the camera sticks out from the back of the phone, so you have to be careful when placing the phone down. The Ulephone logo is also present and isn't too flashy, but immediately gives it away that it isn't a OnePlus One. I personally have very small hands and did not expect a 5.5 inch phone to be this big, even after playing around with a OnePlus One. It all comes down to personal preference, whether you like a larger display or not. Objectively, however, the Ulephone B Pro's build quality and feel in hand is good, but lacks the premium feel of other smartphones like the HTC One M8 and the iPhone 6. Although the B Pro features a 1280x720 resolution on its 5.5 inch display, I barely noticed. The screen gets quite bright, colors are accurate, and the lower pixel density doesn't affect the experience at all. Some might immediately complain that the pixel density isn't high enough, but for those of you who are firm in your need for a 1080p display, you can safely turn away from this phone. However, if you do not mind a 720p display, then read on. Its IPS panel is obtained from LG and is bright enough. Having just moved from the Cubot X9 which had a brilliantly bright and colorful panel that was very close in quality to the iPhone 6's display, the Ulephone screen is merely satisfactory in that regard. Colors are accurate and the screen is bright enough to use under direct sunlight. I have been surprised with Chinese smartphone speakers as of late. There aren't many speakers that can match up to the fidelity of the HTC One M8, but Chinese manufacturers seem to have hit all the important points in speaker manufacturer for the average consumer. They have made the speaker volume very loud without distortion, ensured that audio quality was good for listening to music, and provided natural voice tones for audio such as calls, podcasts, and audiobooks. I listened to podcasts using the Ulephone speakerphone while traveling at about 100 km an hour, and my car is definitely not well sealed, making the inside very noisy, but I could still hear my podcast loud and clear. The Ulephone B Pro is no exception. You will be satisfied with the quality and volume of these speakers. One thing I didn't like was how deep the headphone jack was. When trying to use it with my aux cable in the car, it crackled and never got properly connected, so I gave up and just used a speakerphone for podcasts. My aux cable isn't the greatest, my THL 5000 will disconnect if you even touch the aux cable or swerve too hard. However, there is absolutely no problem when using headphones with the Ulephone B Pro. I didn't know what to think when it came to the Ulephone B Pro's battery life. On one hand, it had the brand new MTK6732 processor that is supposedly 30% more power efficient than the MTK6592. On the other hand, they paired a decidedly subpar 2600mAh battery with a relatively large 5.5 inch display. Would battery life be good? Bad? Or just average due to those two components averaging each other out? I performed the tests and found out. 
I did a web browsing test as well as a video test. I set the screen brightness to about 250 nits of brightness and installed a web reloader from Google Play and used it to reload web pages over Wi-Fi every few seconds. The phone died after 5.5 hours of constant browsing. While it is far from the 11 hours my THL 5000 gets, don't forget that the THL has 5000 mAh battery and a smaller screen. In the video playback test, I played a video until the phone died. The phone died after 8.5 hours of video playback. On a more normal battery test, the phone was off the charger for a total of about 18 hours. During that time, Wi-Fi, data, and GPS was always on. Double tap to wake was also activated as well. I racked up a total of 3 hours of screen on time. Check out my text review in the description below for more detailed battery info. Charging the phone from 0% to 100% took about 2 hours. However, because of the larger screen, do not expect 2 day battery life. But the battery will get you throughout moderate to heavy use for a day. The Ulephone B Pro runs a 100% stock version of Android 4.4.4 KitKat. Ulephone has already provided a video showing Android 5.0 Lollipop running on the Ulephone B Pro, so you are pretty much guaranteed an OTA update to Lollipop in the near future. So let's talk about the B Pro's KitKat version of software. Have I mentioned that I have not used a Chinese phone that is as smooth as a Nexus device, a OnePlus One, or an HTC One M8? Well, now there is. Smooth to the touch, a sensitive and properly calibrated touchscreen, this phone just responds when you put your finger on it. Launching apps is instant, on par with a OnePlus One. Another issue I've had with my other Chinese phones is that swiping using Google Keyboard and Swipe had a laggy gesture trail, while other lower-end devices including the Moto G had perfectly responsive gesture trails. Ulephone has fixed this as well. Smart gestures seem to be a staple in all Chinese smartphones nowadays. For those who don't know what smart gestures are, it allows the user to draw certain gestures on the screen while it is off to launch certain applications. For example, drawing an M on the screen would launch music. It also allows the user to wake the device by double tapping on the screen or swiping up on the screen. These smart gestures use up more battery life as it prevents the phone from entering deep sleep. So it is a trade-off on features versus battery life. It also includes a very basic notification control in the settings. You can change the notification light to 5 different colors and edit the settings for basic notifications like calls and SMS. It has multiple languages as well, so pause the video to see if your language is supported. Ulephone partitioned the internal storage very well. Unlike other phones that partitioned 4 gigs or so for the phone and partitioned the rest as the internal SD card, they partitioned all the 16 gigs as internal storage so all of it is usable. With the Mali T760 graphics chip, this phone pulled off gaming without a hitch. Coupled with 2 gigs of RAM and a 720p resolution, intense games such as Rail Racing ran buttery smooth. Other popular games like Clash of Clans also ran perfectly well. I ran the Antutu benchmark as well and obtained a relatively low score of 30,000. Other Ulephone B Pros are getting higher scores than this, so I will run some more tests as well. This phone supports quad-band GSM as well as quad-band WCDMA. It also supports certain FDD LTE bands, specifically 1, 3, 7, and 20. Check out the text review down below for a link to supported bands by country. Interestingly, it gets better reception than any of my other Chinese and North American phones. In areas in my basement where I don't get any reception with those two phones, I get a weak one-bar signal with the Eula phone. I used speed tests and tested the 4G or LTE speeds in different areas in Toronto here in Canada and got varying speeds anywhere from 25 to 36 megabits per second. Wi-Fi performance is also good as I get reception anywhere in the house. Bluetooth and NFC also work as expected. The GPS locked on almost instantly and never once lost signal. I used it to navigate to work for about one hour and it always stayed on course and never deviated even once. Ulephone was involved in a controversy with this phone where they had claimed the back camera contained a Sony sensor when in fact it did not. They provided a letter of apology but not much more. However, the non-Sony camera is still very responsive with very minimal lag between movement of the phone and what the screen displays. It captures colors very well and fidelity isn't bad either. I'm quite satisfied with the daylight performance of the camera, but what I'm really impressed with is the low light performance of the camera. While it is still a far cry from the likes of the HTC One M8 with its ultrapixel camera, it is leaps and bounds ahead of other Chinese phones in its price range or even those above 200 US dollars. So what is the verdict on this $170 OnePlus One clone? 
Good specifications, good build quality, and a better than average battery might compel some to purchase this. However, the 720p screen might stop some. For me personally, the only thing stopping me from switching from my THL to the Ulephone was battery life. I need to be able to play games on my phone for 11 hours in one day. But if you don't mind playing games on your phone for less than 11 hours in a day, then you won't mind this battery life. In conclusion, I highly recommend this phone. It is a great phone for the price. So once you're done watching, go hit up the link and buy one of these. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Hey guys, thanks to those of you who also watched my Cubot X9 review. And if you haven't yet, go check it out right here. While you're still here, I would greatly appreciate it if you would give my video a thumbs up. Thanks.